Hello everyone, this is a classic simply supported beam problem. Today we're going to learn how to create a shear and a bending diagram as well as the reaction forces at these two uh, support locations. Finally, we're going to calculate the maximum bending stress at the beam and at the end we will compare the simulation results against the hand calculated values. So let's begin. Let's create a new part. This problem is in inches, so we're just going to make sure that we have the the right settings. Okay, so now let's go to the top plane, create a line. We're doing the uh, the overall beam length, um, and that length is 12 inches in total. But we need to split this up into two sections because um, there is going to be a force right here, uh, three inches from the origin. So we want SOLIDWORKS to create a joint here so we can use it to place the force. So let's hit OK. Let's go to Weldments. If you don't have Weldments, you can go to Tabs and select Weldments. Under Structural Member, uh, we can select any beam type. Um, it doesn't matter because we are changing the the beam profile. This is a circular shape and we want to change that to an I-beam for this problem. So let's select the whole shape, delete, and let's create the I-beam. This is the web of the I-beam. So now let's do the flange, which is the top section of the, the beam. Now I'm going to create a center line and let's provide some dimensions. So this is 2.33 inches according to the problem. The web thickness is 0 0.170 inches. The flange is 0 0.260. I want this line and this other line be equal to each other so I can apply that relationship. And I'm going to provide this dimension 1.50. We can trim this inner section here. And now we are ready to uh, mirror entity about the center line that I created. We can hit OK and let's trim that line right there. We can hit OK one more time and one more time. This is our, our beam. We just need to rotate the beam. So let's go back to the welding feature. And if you scroll down on this section right here, we can type 90 degrees and it'll rotate for us. Now we're ready for the simulation. Let's create a new study. We can name this uh, simply simply support a beam. And let's hit OK. Let's apply a material. For now, we can select alloy steel. Now let's apply some fixture to the to the beam. So this is the joint that was created because of the lines that we made. So under uh, fixed geometry, we can select this one here, reference geometry, and let's select the first joint. Reference planes, we're going to use the top plane as a reference. And we are going to apply a constraint normal to that plane and also along to that plane. So if you want to make that symbol bigger, we can uh, go to symbol settings and make that 500. And you can see the constraints that we apply. In case that you are not sure because of the symbols being too small, you can increase that. Let's apply the other fixed geometry at the other location. 
we'll do the same thing. Now let's select the other joint top plane, apply a constraint normal to that plane and along that plane. Let's make the symbol bigger, 500, and we confirm we have the right directions. Now we can um, apply the force at this location here. We're going to select the joint because we have the joint to be selected. The plane, we're going to select the top plane as a reference and change the units. And the force will be normal to that plane. And this force is uh, 488. Let's take a look at the direction of the force. If you make that 500, we can see it's in the opposite direction. We can just reverse. Let's take a look really quick at the sample problem. So this is the force that we just apply, and these are the two supports that we just, that we created before. Now we can hit OK, and we're ready to run the simulation. After we got the simulation, we can bring the diagrams. The first one is going to be the shear force diagram change the unit and we can make this uh, probably 15 to make the diagrams a little bit smaller chart options show the maximum annotations if you want to show the minimum you can also select that uh, decimal units we can make that one and let's hit okay so that's a, a, our first shear force diagram let's bring the bending moment diagram for the bending moment, we're going to select the moment about direction 2, change the unit, so we can make that 15 as well. And um, I want to see the minimum and the maximum annotation on that diagram. And let's make this one as well. All right, so for the, for the, um, for the shear force, let me rotate this a little bit so we can see better we have a uh, 366 pound force at this top section and 122 pound force at the bottom section for the for the bending moment um, let me just rotate this and we have 1098 pound for pound force inch at this location right here so now let's take a look at the calculated values. So this is for the shear force. We have 366 pound force for the shear force and 122. And for the bending moment, we have we obtain 1,098 pound force inch. And that's exactly what we um, what SolidWorks simulated on these two bending diagrams. So now let's bring the reaction forces at the at these two supports reaction force and let's change the units and we're going to select the the joints where the supports are located click on update and let me select this one here click update so for the left support we have a uh, 366 pound force for the reaction and support number two we have 122 let's compare that to the calculated values so 366 for the left support and 122 pound force for the right support and um, and this is what we obtain with the SOLIDWORKS simulation um, we can hit OK finally we can we can also obtain the uh, maximum bending stress at the beam due to M, due to the bending moment that we just calculated. Right now we have a Newton meter square. We, we need to change that to PSI so we can compare that to the calculated value. So double click and select PSI. 
chart options show the max, the maximum and minimum. Let's change that to flooring and um, can make that equal to one. And we see that the um, the maximum bending stress occurs at this location with a value of 659 psi. Let's see the calculated value. This is a um, the bending stress for the for the beam. This is the MCI uh, formula, and we obtain 659 psi as well. So that concludes um, that the uh, percentage error between SOLIDWORKS and the hand calculated values for this problem is less than 1%. And uh, this concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching.